the end of the first ever virtual APEC meetings, with Malaysia handing over virtually to next year's host, New Zealand, the realities of the pandemic that inevitably dominated this year's event. As a grouping whose economies constitute about 60% of the global GDP, APEC assumed a central role in spearheading post-pandemic economic recovery. We need to trade and invest our way out of the current economic downturn. The APEC leaders' meeting culminated in the unveiling of their new set of goals, the Putrajaya Vision 2040, and a declaration with a strong commitment to freer trade and investment, boosting the digital economy and ensuring growth is both inclusive and sustainable. While it takes into consideration the current global challenges, it is also forward-looking and ambitious, and of course this will drive economic recovery, uh, spur growth in the region, and we hope of course to bring greater prosperity to be shared amongst the people of Asia-Pacific. China's President Xi Jinping said that APEC can't afford to see trade as a zero-sum political game in which one country's loss is another country's win, but rather a platform for mutually beneficial development. After saying months ago he would skip this year's meeting, U.S. President Donald Trump did take part in the end. But his apparent disdain for the multilateral approach to trade that APEC supports has had a spillover effect, analysts say. Unfortunately, the lack of interest from the U.S. has somehow diminished the importance of APEC in the eyes of the American business community, which is sadly so. But we'd like to see uh, the Americans coming back in full force next year. Welcome. Some leaders expressed the hope that the next U.S. administration would be more favorable to multilateralism, trade liberalization, cooperation, and APEC itself as a means of achieving those aims. Ryan Meltzer, CGTN, Kuala Lumpur.